subordinate male. The females quickly recognize that a more desirable residence has appeared in the neighborhood and start to move across. And the sex-starved wimp suddenly finds himself amazingly popular. So the females do indeed go for the males with the hottest rocks. These lizards on a small islet off the shores of Minorca in the Mediterranean get their heat from another and very unusual source. Ow! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're very curious. I'm the new boy on the block, the new object in their uh, environment. Um, and that one just gave me a little nip. They investigate the world around them by tasting it, and they're still trying to work out what I am. Their island is rocky and not particularly rich in food. The lizards are primarily insect eaters, but during the flowering season they also take nectar. They collect it from plants, like spurge, which is very common, and they have a very special relationship with this flower. It's called the dead horse Aaron, and it certainly looks like carrion and <laughs> it smells very strongly of carrion. As a consequence of both its looks and its smell, it attracts carrion flies. And of course, it's the flies that the lizards are after. But as well as providing food for the lizards, this extraordinary flower helps them in another way. If this central part, which is called the spadix, is slightly warm, as you can see from a thermal camera. The chemical process that produces the disgusting smell also creates heat and raises the temperature of the flower by up to five degrees above the surroundings, sufficiently high for a lizard to warm itself on it on a cold morning. And in case you find that hard to believe, here is confirmation from the thermal camera. The purplish-blue lizard quickly takes on the same temperature and colour as the arum. And sitting on arums brings another benefit. Breakfast. A fly, lured by the smell, crawls inside. The lizard hears the fly buzzing within. The fly, of course, can't find anything it wants, but now it can't get out. The entrance to the flower is blocked by the lizard. And the lizard gets an easy meal. Two months later, the air and flowers have shriveled and produced their fruits. Until 20 years ago, the lizards ignored these withered bundles. After all, they hardly looked like food. But then, a particularly inquisitive individual sampled a fruit and found the soft flesh around the seed rather good. The habit spread, and now the whole lizard population, uniquely in the Mediterranean, have become Aram fruit eaters. They do take a bit of swallowing, but seeds passing through a lizard's gut not only survive, but germinate even more easily. As a result, the Arams, which were rather scarce here 20 years ago, have suddenly become abundant all over the island. Cold, windswept island off the coast of South Africa 
is not the first place you'd go to if you were looking for reptiles. But here on Dasson Island, among penguins and seagulls, there's one of the greatest concentration of tortoises to be found anywhere on Earth. There are about 5,000 of them on this one tiny island. The penguins and other birds, thanks to their warm blood, are active no matter how cold it is. But the tortoises have to wait for the day to warm up before they can get about their business. They bask in the sunshine powering up their bodies to the optimum working temperature of 33 degrees centigrade, and then they go off to feed. As the day progresses, the temperature rises quickly, and even before noon, it's too hot for comfort. The tortoises have to head for shade. In the late afternoon, it gets cooler, and the tortoises venture out again. For them, this is the best time. They're thoroughly warmed up, they've digested their morning meal, and they've got energy to spare. The males begin to fight, jousting like medieval knights, using a projection on the front of the shell like a lance. Whoa. <laughs> The technique is to get the spike under your opponent and then flick him over onto his back. Contests can last for half an hour. The loser tries to right himself, but the winner keeps biting his legs. At last, the victor loses interest and goes off to find the female who caused the argument in the first place. As for the loser, if he doesn't manage to right himself soon, he may cook in the sun. Tortoises are able to sunbathe out in the open because their strong bony shell gives them almost complete protection from predators. Less well-armored reptiles, like lizards, are vulnerable, of course, to hawks and coyotes and foxes and cats. And in the morning, when those warm-blooded animals are already active, the lizards are cold and can't move fast, so they have a problem. But they also have a solution. Secret sunbathing. You really can't see them until you're right on top of them. And there's one there. I'm in Arizona, and that at my feet is a lizard buried in the sand up to its neck. <laughs> 